Welcome to another video. Let's take a quick trip into linear algebra again and solve a system of equations. In this video, I'm going to solve this system of equations using Kramer's rule, and I'm also going to solve it using the Gauss-Jordan elimination method. Now, you choose what method works for you, and even while using Kramer's rule, I will make an attempt at using both methods for solving or finding the determinant of a matrix. So I'll use both the cofactor expansion method and the rule of Sarus. Sounds interesting. Let's get into the video. So in solving a system of equations, using Kramer's rule, you want to quickly rewrite your system as a product of matrices. So you just take the skeleton out of this. I'm going to take this. It's going to be 4, minus 1, and 2. It's going to be 1, 2, minus 2. And this is minus 1, 1, and this is 1. So I have a matrix. This matrix is actually what I'm writing here, x, y, z. And the result is on the right-hand side as a column, 13, 0, and 5. So, this system of equations could have been written this way. It's the same thing. Because remember, you take the row and you multiply the column. So it is 4 times x minus 1 times y, 2 times z, and that's what you see here. And your result for the very first one is going to be 13. And the same thing for the others. So what does Kramer's rule say? Well, Kramer's rule says that if you want to solve for x, if you want to find x, all you have to do is find the determinant of this matrix and call it delta. If you cannot find the determinant of your original matrix, or if the determinant is 0, that's what I mean. The determinant is zero. You cannot use Kramer's rule. Okay? That's where the Gauss-Jordan elimination method has an advantage. Now, if you want to solve for x, you will have to replace the x column. You can see this is the x column. You have to replace the x column with your answer. You change it, and then you find the determinant. You call that delta x. You do the same thing. You replace y with this, and then you call it delta y. You replace z with this, you call it delta z, and this is how you get all of your answers. Let me write it here. It says that x will be equal to delta x over delta. y will be equal to delta y over delta. And z will be equal to delta z over delta. You just have to compute delta and delta x, delta y, delta z, you get your answer. So, let's do it. The rule of Saru says, just copy any two columns and paste it on the other side. Or copy any two rows, rows and paste it down here. Okay, it doesn't matter which direction you want to go, but I would like to go this way. So, I'm going to copy 4, 1, minus 1, and copy the next one, minus 1, 2, 1. So, to get my answer, in this case, what I'm going to do is, I'll look at the main diagonal, and I'm going to multiply down this way. You must use the main diagonal to get all your positive values. When I say positive, the ones you're going to have on your left-hand side, because we'll be doing a subtraction. So, look, make a parenthesis like this under, minus, make another one here, and then you're going to get your answer. What would you put here? Multiply this way. 4 times 2 times 1 will give you... 8. You go to the next one. Minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 1 is going to be plus, no, minus 2. And then that's done. And then you do the same thing here. You multiply, you're going to get plus 2. So we're done with the 3. You're going to repeat the same thing, but you're going to start from the bottom and go up. You multiply. If I multiply this by this by this, I'm going to get minus 4. So minus 4 is here. If I go this way, I'm going to get minus 8. Minus 8. So 
minus 4, minus 8, and this is the last one. 1 times 1 times minus 1 gives me minus 1. So what do I get? Here I get 8, here I get minus 13. So it's 8 minus minus 13, which is 8 plus 13. What's 8 plus 13? 21. So I got 21. So this delta guy is 21, which means I can actually replace I can replace this delta here with 21, all of them. Delta is now mature, so we got 21. So we just need to find D, delta X, delta Y, and delta Z. Okay, now let's do that. I might just use the rule of Sarus again, okay? So you, we can practice. So, so what's gonna happen is, because I wanna find delta x, instead of writing for the x column, instead of writing 4, 1, minus 1, I'm gonna write 13, 0, 5. So it's gonna be 13, 0, 5. And then I'm going to have um, minus 1. So you don't change anything else. 2, 1. Okay, so this is what I need to find the determinant of. If I want to use the rule of Sarus, remember I'm going to copy the first two columns and repeat. Okay, so let's do what we do again. We're going to do this. Minus, the main diagonal is the first direction. This is 26. Then I'm going to go this way. This is going to be plus 10. And I'm going to go this way. That's zero. If I go this way, I'm going to go, this is going to be 20. If I go this way, it's going to be minus 26. If I go this way, it's going to be zero. Okay, so what do I have? I have 36 minus, minus 6. That's 36 plus 6. That's 42. So my delta x is 42 which means I can go here and replace delta x with 42. And you can already see what x is just by doing that. So what is x? x equals 2. Okay, that's taken care of. So I'm going to do delta y and I'm going to use cofactor expansion this time because the third one, I'm going to leave it to you. Okay, so the third one. Let's do delta y. Delta y, we're going to now leave this alone and replace this column. So we have 4, 1, minus 1, and the middle column which is now going to be 13, 0, and 5. And the third part is going to be 2, minus 2, and 1. Okay, so with this we do cofactor expansion. I want to find the determinant. Well, this is equal to, I'm going to like to take the determinant about the middle line here, okay? Because I have a zero, so it makes my life a lot easier. So take the determinant about the middle line means I'm gonna find this is gonna be plus, minus, plus, minus. Oh, this is minus. So this is minus one. And then I go, the cofactors of this will be, let's go one, them. so it's 13, two, five, one. So it's 13, two, five, one. So the next one is zero. I will not take the zero because zero times anything is zero, so I skip it. Minus, plus, minus. This is another minus, but minus times minus is a plus. So I'm going to do plus two, and I find the cofactors of this, not this, not this. So it's 413 minus 15. This may have been the hard way, but at least you learned something. Okay, <laughs> this is now, find the determinant of this is going to be minus, because of this minus, so this is 13 minus 10. 13 minus 10 plus 2 times, this is going to be 20 minus minus 13, that's 20 plus 13, that's 33. Okay, what does this give me? This is negative 3 plus 66. Negative 3 plus 66 is 63. This is equal to 63. So it means I can come here and change delta y 
that's duty 63. So now you can tell that y equals 3, right? Do this one. You should get 4 for this answer for z. If you don't get 4, you're wrong. This is my setup for the Gauss-Jordan elimination. Just copy and paste, put it there like that, okay? Straight from here, 4 minus 1 to 13. I use the straight line to show the equal to sign. So we're going to try to solve. What are we trying to do? We're trying to eliminate. And the first thing you want to do, look, this is my recommendation. Put the smallest number you can think of on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move either this one or this one to the top. Okay, just to start with. You can do it at the end, but I would recommend that actually this one is a good candidate to be on top because it's positive. Okay, so I'm going to say R1 is switched with R2 and that's what it becomes. Okay, now eliminate these two guys. One is your best friend. So what would you add to four to make it zero? You add minus four, that's which is four of this, negative four of this. And what else would you do to this one? You are going to just add this to this. So these are the two things we're going to do. We're going to add, so our new row two, this is how I write it. My new row two is going to be my current row two minus four of row one. And my new row three is going to be equal to the current row three added to row one. That's how I write my notation. Okay? So, now if I subtract four of this from this, I'm going to get zero. So now I'm going to do minus one minus four of this. That's going to be minus nine. And then two minus four of this is going to be 10. Then 13 minus four of this is still 13. I go here, if I add this to this, I'm going to get zero. Or let's put it this way. If I add this to this, I'm going to get three. If I add this to this, I will get minus one. If I add zero to five, I'm going to get five. Okay, so what do I do next? Remember, I have eliminated this. The next elimination I need is this one. I don't want this guy here. Well, it doesn't look like I want to start having fractions. So I would rather eliminate this. The easiest way to eliminate this minus nine is, uh -huh, multiply this by three and add it to this. So I can say that my new row two is going to be the current row two added to three of row three. So if I add this to three of this, I'm going to eliminate this, right? If I add three of this to this rather, I'm going to eliminate this. So that's what I'm going to do. What changes is I'm going to add three of this to this. That gives me zero here. Three of this will be minus three added to this is going to be seven. And three of this is going to be 15 added to this is going to be 28. Ooh. We're almost done. Now I can flip these two rows so that the one with more zeros would be on the bottom. So now what I have is, and also I can divide this by seven, divide this line by seven. Then I'm gonna have zero, zero, one, four. And then I'm going to have zero, three, minus one, five. Okay. Now, remember we call this the Gauss-Jordan elimination. If it was just Gaussian elimination, this is the penultimate step. Now, let me switch this. So I'm gonna switch row two with row three. So what do I have? I have um, zero, three, minus one, and I have zero, zero, one. And then this line goes zero, four, no, zero, five, and then four. If you're doing Gaussian elimination, you have come to the very end of all your matrix work. What you do is, you can read from here, this is the Z column. Z is equal to four. As I predicted here, that Z was supposed to be four. Okay, so Z equals four, then you can go here and say three minus four, 
3y minus 4 equals, and then you can do some more algebra. But the Gauss-Jordan elimination says don't do any algebra, keep doing your matrix elimination until there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. So what do we do next here? I see that now I need to eliminate this and I need to eliminate this and I can use this one. How? I can say if I add this to this, I'm going to get zero here. So that's gone. And I need two of this to be added to this. So I'm going to say that the new row two is going to be the current row two plus row one, row three rather. And I can say that the new row one is going to be the current row one added to two of row three. I'm going to put that here. So if we do this here, what will we get? We're going to get one, two, zero. But we need to add two of row three to this. So that's going to be eight. Then this is going to be zero, three, zero. But I need to add one of this to this. So that's going to be nine. Then I need to, and I have zero, zero, one, four. So clearly, if I divide this line by three, I'm going to have one here. I'll have three here, four. Okay, one more step. I need to eliminate this too, because I only need one, one, one. That's what you must get. So I'm going to um, subtract two of this from this or add negative two of this to this one and see what it happens. Let's do it in our heads, okay? Because we don't have space. So our final column is gonna look like this. One, so let's write the ones that don't change. Zero, zero, one, it's gonna be four. Zero, one, zero, it's gonna be three. Now see, if I take two of this, I multiply two, this by negative two, Add it to this, I'm going to get zero here. So I have one, zero, zero. Minus two times three is six, is minus six. Minus six plus eight is two. So these are your solutions using the gauss jordan elimination method. Now, many students don't like this method because of all the entry cases and the possible mistakes, but when you go into advanced linear algebra or you go into some computing or you have to solve or do some things or find eigenvalues or eigenvectors, this is what you must do. You can't do this. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.